Hello students! Welcome to Math and Magic. For today's video, we will talk about measurements and converting measure. As we know, measurement is the process or the result of determining the ratio of physical quantities. Here, we tend to compare an unknown quantity to a standard unit. Let us put it this way. Say you are selling a piece of wood online. Obviously, you will not just say that the wood is long or short, nor heavy or light. Your buyers might be confused for they cannot visualize the dimensions of the wood you are selling. This will surely drive them to ask how long and heavy the item is. Also remember that sometimes, for you the item may appear long and heavy, but to others it does not. This scenario is often seen in social media. People who are buying items online got disappointed because of the size of the items they received. This happens due to lack of knowledge regarding measurements. Sellers sometimes forget to describe the items they are selling online. Meanwhile, on the part of the buyer, they tend not to look at the description like the size or weight of the items they are buying. Again, all these things emphasize the importance of having knowledge in measurement. Also, we have to remember that a measure should be accurate and precise for it to become valid. If we would go back in time, our ancestors utilized the objects around them like stone, sun, and even their body parts like their thumb, palm, spawn, and others were used as a basis to measure. But as we know, the measurement using these methods will not be accurate and precise. Biologically speaking, people have different physique depending on their genetic structure. Time passed and the system of measurement was developed. People realized the need to use standardized units for trade and commerce to avoid conflicts. They realized that standardized units are more accurate and precise. Moreover, there are two common systems of measurement that we are using until now. These are the English system and the metric system. In English system, we measure length in terms of inch, foot, yard, and mile. Mass were measured in ounce, pound, and ton. For capacity, we use cups, pin, quart, and gallon. Meanwhile, in metric system, which is the basis of the International System of Units or SI, we measure length in terms of meter, mass in kilogram, and capacity or volume in liters. Now before we proceed to the conversion part, let us have first a recap on the different measuring units that you encountered during your elementary years. What you will do is to simply identify the most appropriate measuring unit for the following items. Are you ready? For item number one, length of a book is the appropriate unit kilogram, milliliter, or centimeter. If your answer is centimeter, you're correct. Here, the unit kilogram is for mass and milliliter is for volume. Only centimeter is for length, so it is the answer. Item number two, the distance from Laguna to Manila is the appropriate unit millimeter, kilometer, or foot. Here, the correct answer is kilometer. Although these three units are for length or distance, millimeter and foot are two small units for a length that would cover such a large distance. So the correct answer is kilometer. Third item, weight of a pineapple is the appropriate unit kilogram, gallon, or centimeter. That's right. 
it is kilogram. Here, the unit gallon is for volume, while centimeter is for length. Also, you would notice that when your parents bought a pineapple in the market, the seller would base the price depending on the weight of the pineapple in kilogram. For our last item, volume of a glass of water. Is it for gallon, liter, or milliliter? The correct answer here is milliliter. Although these three units are for volume, gallon and liter seems to be too much for a glass of water. At an average, a glass of water has a volume of 240 ml or milliliter. Now moving to converting measurements, by definition, converting means to express a certain measurement to another equivalent unit. In converting measure, it is important to identify the conversion factor needed in order to reach the desired unit. Always remember that in converting a large unit of measurement to a smaller unit, multiplication must be applied. Moreover, converting smaller unit to a larger unit, division will be used. To better understand this, here is our first example. Convert 129 feet to yards. Here we need to identify first the conversion factor or the relationship between the two units. In English metric system, 1 yard is equivalent to 3 feet. Given 129 feet, we will multiply the pair of conversion factors to this given measure. This will be 129 feet times 1 yard over 3 feet. By the way, make sure that the unit given in the problem, in this case foot, should be found on the opposite location of the fraction for it to be eliminated. Dividing 129 by 3, the quotient is 43. Then we will affix the unit yards. Also notice that since the smaller unit foot, was converted to the larger unit yard, the operation that we used is division. Thus, 129 feet is equivalent to 43 yards. For our second example, convert 3.17 kilograms to milligram. Again, we need to identify first the conversion factor. In the metric system, there are 1 million milligrams in 1 kilogram. In a conversion line, there are 6 units from milligram to kilogram. This is the reason why 1 kilogram is equivalent to 1 million milligrams. Next, we will multiply the given 3.17 kilograms by the conversion factor. Here we will place 1 kilogram in the denominator so that the unit kilogram will be cancelled out. We will now multiply 3.17 by 1 million. The product is 3,170,000 milligrams. Moreover, since we convert a larger unit kilogram to a smaller unit milligram, the operation that we used is multiplication. For our third example, this one is conversion of time. Convert 24 hours or 1 day in seconds. Now when given this kind of item, we need to list all the conversion factors needed to attain the units given. In this case, second and hour. We know that there are 60 seconds in 1 minute and 60 minutes in 1 hour. Writing our conversion expression, we will begin with the given 24 hours. Then we will multiply this by 60 minutes over 1 hour. Again, we place 1 hour in the denominator so that the unit R will be cancelled out. After this, we will multiply this again by 60 seconds over 1 minute. Here, the unit minute will also be cancelled out. 
what remain now are 24 times 60 times 60 seconds. Multiplying these values, the product is 86,400. Hence, in 24 hours or one day, there are 86,400 seconds. Thank you for watching. God bless.